Okay, in order to measure the total heat across the evaporator coil, we need to take a dry bulb, wet bulb temperature with our humidity stick in the return air or mixed air stream and also in the supply air stream. We want to put place the uh, humidity stick in the supply air stream out of sight of the evaporator coil if possible at least two feet away from the coil because we want to get a good uh, average temperature of mixed air. You may have to do some probing with your humidity stick or a thermometer to tell uh, where your best temperature is but uh, anywhere in this area would not be a good location so we need to get downstream and preferably out of sight so we have a good mixed air. Taking the temperature and the wet bulb and dry bulb on the inlet side of the evaporator coil should preferably be close to uh, the mixed air stream. So you could take it uh, in this return air duct or in the uh, uh, fan suction section, but you may get some leakage from the unit, actual unit itself, uh, and especially if the furnace or air handler is located in unconditioned space, then you'll get raw air with a lot of latent and sensible heat in it that could uh, uh, throw your your uh, measurements off. And if there is outside air ducked in to the return here somewhere, then uh, you'll get a bad reading there. So the ideal location is going to be at the inlet, uh, as close to this coil as you can get it, uh, without picking up uh, uh, any interference off of the coil, and then at least two feet and preferably out of sight of the uh, supply air site. We use the uh, Testo 605H2 as the humidity stick. When you turn it, first turn it on, you're going to get a percent relative humidity reading, so it's showing 61%, 60% RH in here. You get actually three displays off of this. The second time you press the button, you're going to get a uh, dry bulb temperature. We'll use this dry bulb temperature in our calculations. Uh, and then the really important one is if you press it again, you're going to get a wet bulb temperature. You see it says wet bulb and Fahrenheit, uh, so it's 61.2 degrees wet bulb in here. And of course what we want is a delta or a difference between the inlet and the outlet of the evaporator coil. And with the information from this instrument, or two of these instruments, one on the the return side, mixed air side, and one on the supply air side, then we can uh, calculate the amount of moisture in the air, uh, the amount of sensible drop across the coil, uh, latent drop across the coil, calculate the total heat, grains of moisture with a psychometrics chart, and uh, uh, we can actually measure the real-time capacity uh, that that unit's working at. One thing you need to notice is down on the bottom here, uh, there's an arrow on the bottom, and there's also a window that needs to be opened. Uh, this window has, uh, the sensor has a, a mirror on one side and uh, some electronics on the other side. The mirror needs to face the airflow to get a good wet bulb reading. Uh, the arrow goes with the airflow on the bottom side. Make sure you uh, uh, keep that window closed when not in use. Our measurements for BTU capacity and EER are done in real time. Uh, there are also time-based measurements, so the time-based measure equivalent for energy efficiency ratio EER is SEER, which is seasonal energy efficiency ratio. And the relationship uh, between SEER and EER is uh, ear is about 0.875 of sear that's just an approximation uh, the BTU of course is the amount of heat it takes to raise one pound of water one degree and the time based measure for that would be BTUs per hour BTU hours the electrical measurement is the watt and one watt is 
a uh, uh, watts or volts times amps times power factor. The time base measure for that is the watt hour and that's what your electric meter uh, measures is watt hours and that's what most uh, consumers get billed in is the, the consumption over time of watt hours. The KW is the instantaneous measure uh, which is going to be our 1000 watts or volts times amps times power factor and the time base measure is KWH which is again the uh, measure most consumers are billed in uh, in 1000 watt hours or KWH. Using your humidity stick to convert the wet bulb temperatures and dry bulb temperatures to sensible and latent heat uh, you will need a psychometrics chart or the spreadsheet calculator to calculate the, uh, the delta H in order to come up with the real-time BTU capacity for the unit. Uh, and of course you take your dry bulb, wet bulb split across the evaporator coil and the, for, the formula is BTUs equals 4.5 times CFM times delta H which is the total sensible, delta H is the total sensible and latent heat. Uh, 4.5 is the total heat factor and that's uh, at standard air conditions that we typically see in air conditioning. Uh, it can change with altitude and temperature, uh, but this is a good good uh, factor to use. CFM, of course, is cubic feet per minute. So we've calculated our capacity for the unit, and we can divide that by 12,000 to get one ton of cooling. Uh, to get the EER, EER is simply uh, BTUs divided by watts, so a 12 EER uh, as an example, 12,000 BTUs divided by 1,000 watts would be a 12 EER, so uh, that's, your, that's your calculation. Now you have the real-time capacity of the unit and the real-time EER of the unit that you can compare with the nameplate uh, data and uh, make your corrections to get a more efficient 